Thank you for tuning in to Terry Swoop videos. On today's video, I'm gonna talk about the rise and fall of Rick James, the king of funk. Rick James created his own style of funk music. He was a musical genius. Even though he always had problems with addictions, he was always a musical genius as a writer, producer, and performer. Now, Rick James was born on February 1st, 1948 in Buffalo, New York. He had eight siblings. He was the youngest of eight siblings. His father was an auto mechanic who left the family when he was 10 years old. And his mother, Maple Gladden, was forced to raise eight kids by herself. She ran numbers for local jazz bands in the New York area during the 1950s. And Rick James growing up without a father, not having that male role model around, is the reason why he got in trouble as a teenager. He was arrested several times as a teenager, and he eventually enlisted into the army. In 1964, the Vietnam War started, and they started a draft that said any person between the ages of 16 and 24 had to enter the draft. And if they chose you to go to Vietnam, you had to go to Vietnam. Rick James refused to go to Vietnam because there were a lot of young teenage boys that were coming home in body bags. A lot of these teenage boys were being forced to go to war and they were coming home in body bags. So Rick James decided, the hell with that, I'm not going to Vietnam. So he became a deserter and he moved to Canada. And Muhammad Ali also refused to go to Vietnam and they sentenced him to five years in prison for refusing to go to Vietnam. But Rick James fled to Canada where he met Neil Young and they started a rock and roll band called the Minor Birds and they had a lot of success. He was the only black guy in this white rock and roll band. And Neil Young is the person that introduced him to the music industry. He taught him how to play the guitar. He taught him everything about the music industry. And they ended up signing with Motown Records in 1966. But eventually they broke up when Neil Young went solo and Rick James went solo. Now at the time, Rick James went by a separate name called Ricky Johnson in order to avoid being arrested by the government because he was still on the run for deserting during the Vietnam War. When he left the Minor Birds in the late 60s, he worked at Motown as a writer and producer. He wrote and produced songs for various artists throughout the late 1960s and early 1970s. When the Vietnam War ended, they stopped prosecuting people for deserting the Vietnam War. And this is when he started going by the name Rick James again. He stopped hiding, and this is when he started putting out his solo records. His first solo record was released in 1974 called My Baby. It was a minor hit. He didn't start getting mainstream success until 1978 when he released the album Come Get It. This album sold over 3 million copies. It debuted in the top five on the Billboard charts and it was fueled by the success of the single Mary Jane. Now when Mary Jane first came out, the record executives at Motown they thought this song was about a girl. They thought he was singing about some girl that he's in love with. They had no idea that the song was about marijuana. That the girl that he's singing about in the song is marijuana. Mary Jane represents weed. And the record executives at Motown had no idea that the song was about weed. Every time he did a concert, he would smoke weed while he's singing the song. And he would tell everybody in the audience to fire it up. So it was common sense that he was singing about weed and not singing about a girl. But in the process of doing this, all the music channels started banning his records. They started banning his music videos. And this is why he didn't get the mainstream success that he should have. Even though he was selling platinum, he wasn't selling what Michael Jackson was selling, and he wasn't selling what Prince was selling, even though his music was just as good as theirs. 
But because he promoted weed, the mainstream shut him out. And all the music channels banned his music videos. Even BET would ban his music videos. So he had a hard time getting his music in the mainstream. But even though the mainstream shut him out, he was still selling platinum. Between 1978 and 1983, he had five platinum selling albums. So he was selling records like hotcakes. He just wasn't selling at the level that Prince was selling and that Michael Jackson was selling. This is why him and Prince didn't always get along. Even though they respected each other as artists, they didn't always get along because Rick James accused Prince of stealing his style. He accused Prince of stealing his sexual persona on stage. And Rick James came out long before Prince came out. So a lot of people think Prince got a lot of his style from Rick James. And I believe he did get a lot of his style from Rick James. I believe the main reason why Prince had a more successful career than Rick James is Prince stayed away from drugs. He had never allowed his life to be corrupted by drugs and alcohol. The downfall of Rick James's success was his dependence on drugs and alcohol. This ruined his career. This stopped him from being a mainstream artist. Rick James has admitted to a drug problem back in the 1970s, a problem that was hard to kick. I was uh, off of the drugs then at that time, seriously. And um, it was like a time in my life when things were happening real fast and I didn't quite have a serious grip on, you know, th you know, on things. And though he still has his vices, James has publicly acknowledged where his priorities now lie. Do I love sex? Yes, abundantly. Do I love women? Yes, totally. Do I, do I love the fact that I have lots of money and, they have, uh, and I'm rich and famous? And yes, that's real great. But that means nothing compared to what I'm about in here. Rick James' highest selling album came in 1983 when he releases the album Street Songs. It sold 3 million copies in the U.S. and it sold 6 million copies worldwide. And this is the album that has Super Freaks on it. Even though MTV bans his music video, Super Freaks, it makes the top 20 on the Billboard charts. And he has the highest success he ever had before in his career. And then the very next year, he releases the number one single with Eddie Murphy, Party All The Time. He wrote and produced this song. And Eddie Murphy sings the lead and he sings back up on the song. This song went on to sell 3 million copies and it made the number one on the Billboard charts. Eddie Murphy has been in Buffalo for almost a week. Most of that time has been spent inside Rick James' recording studio. The pair planned to produce Murphy's first singing single. Their plans were helped when the area was hit with the worst snowstorm of the year. We've been snowed in for four days. I have not left the house since I got here. Being confined to the studio actually helped the duo all but complete the new 45, entitled Party All the Time. After 1985, Rick James's career started to go downhill because his drug addiction got worse and worse and worse. He became addicted to crack cocaine. And he said during, it was a five year period where he spent $7,000 a week on drugs. $7,000 a week on drugs. That's insane. How he was able to stay alive as long as he did is it was a month ago yesterday that Rick James was arrested along with his girlfriend, Tanya Hajazi, for allegedly imprisoning a 24-year-old woman in his Hollywood Hills home, torturing her allegedly with a hot cocaine pipe and forcing her to commit sexual acts on his girlfriend, Tanya Hajazi. Well, it was about a week ago, or rather a week ago Saturday, on August 24th, that Rick James was released. His bail, his million-dollar bail, cut in half to $500,000. And frankly, we haven't heard much from Rick James until tonight. Now, I just got off the phone with his attorney, Robert Sheehan, just a few moments ago. He tells me that Rick James left his office, left Mr. Sheehan's office after a defense con uh, conference at about 2.45, said he came over to Hollywood apparently to buy some airline tickets and that he was flying to Hawaii tonight with his girlfriend to get away for a while. Obviously, he did not make that flight.
1993, Rick James was sentenced to five years in prison for kidnapping and assault. During his time in prison, he becomes sober and he stops doing drugs and alcohol. And this makes him think more rationally about all the things that he did wrong throughout his life. He's released from prison in 1996. But by stopping doing drugs, this actually causes him to gain a lot of weight and he has a stroke in 1998. R-K-Z. Is that good? Yeah, that's good. What's this is the rehab center at Northridge Hospital, about the last place you'd expect to find a funk star. How's the dizziness? Like a big Titanic. He looks a lot different now than the way most of us remember him. Rick James made his first gold record, You and I, back in 1978. Three years later, he shot to superstardom with the 1981 blockbuster, Super Freak. What a, what a career. I look at that as accomplishments I made in life, you know? I mean, I can look at that stuff and say, yeah, I mean, I really did do something. Lately, that thought's been especially comforting. It's been a treacherous couple of months. It was very tough. It was very, very tough. Two and a half months ago, after a concert in Denver, something happened that would change Rick James forever. Yeah, I was just in golfs. Not by pain, but just by um, the loss of control and dizziness. It was unlike anything he'd ever experienced, even during the wildest of times. During the days when I was really drugging a lot of stuff, you know, drinking and drugging, um, there was times when I would OD, you know. But this time was really different. There was something about this time that made it exceptional. My brain couldn't tell my feet to function. Three days later, back in Los Angeles, Rick found out why. He suffered the death of a part of his brain. He suffered a brain attack or a stroke. That's a no. All right, let's do some of the backwards walking. Have you been practicing? It's painful when you, it's painful mentally when you find you're like a child and things that really came natural to you before, like walking or balancing yourself, become really, um, Kind of like, you know, wow, I can't do that anymore. Rick's stroke happened after he burst an artery in the back of his neck. When the artery broke, blood flow was stopped to areas of his brain responsible for balance, coordination, muscle control, and vision. Once you have damaged those brain cells, and once they, have, and once they die, they, they do not reproduce themselves. And so what we, uh, what we hope we will be able to do is to have new pathways to develop and train other areas of the brain to take over. But by all accounts, Rick's progress has been impressive. He's been blessed with such a determination and so much courage um, to withstand everything that he's been through. Not to mention the long, hard road that lies ahead, along with physical therapy three times a week. Rick is undergoing occupational therapy to get his mind and his body working in sync again. Does it feel good? Does it feel easy? Mm -hmm. Smooth? Most important thing is keeping a positive attitude. And most important is looking at his current level of function and realize that it is not quite the same as it was prior to the stroke, but it's improving, and it's an improving every day. Dr. William Young says because he's had one stroke, Rick's now at an increased risk of having another, one that could kill him or leave him profoundly disabled. A 1993 prison sentence for drug-related assault charges brought an end to Rick's notorious drug use, but he admits there were other vices he needed to abandon. I mean, I don't smoke cigarettes anymore. I can't eat fried foods. Chicken's out. Southern fried chicken. And the colonel is like out the door. So how does a man with such decadent appetite stay on the straight and narrow? One thing about Rick is he wants to live. I mean, I don't want to die anymore. I mean, there was a time when I, I think I had a death wish. In 2003, when Dave Chappelle did the comedy skit about Charlie Murphy and his awkward relationship with Rick James, this educated a lot of younger people on who Rick James is because a lot of younger people don't know about Rick James from the 70s and 80s. All they know about Rick James is the Dave Chappelle comedy skit. The Dave Chappelle show became so popular from this skit, it became the highest rated show on cable. And Rick James appeared on the show to do the parody. And he said that everything that Charlie Murphy said was 100% true. I'm glad Rick James never looked at the parody as being disrespectful. He's always been honest about his drug addictions. He's always been brutally honest about all his trials and tribulations throughout his life. 
the popularity of the show is the reason why he started touring again and started recording music again. But unfortunately, he passed away in 2004. He was only 56 years old. The coroner said he died from natural causes. So it wasn't drug related. He died from natural causes. I've always been a huge fan of Rick James's music. He will go down in history as the king of funk. A lot of people have different opinions about this topic. Leave a comment, rate, and subscribe.